We all know that fundraising is one of the top challenges that nonprofits face in supporting their mission. So is it possible to charge for your nonprofit services to generate some sustainable revenue? And if so, how? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Amber Melanie Smith and I'm a nonprofit founder and executive director. I make these videos here on YouTube to help folks like you who want to make an impact in the world, whether that's through starting a nonprofit or social enterprise, socially conscious business or other type of way to make an impact. I hope that you find this video is useful to you and helpful to you in your change making journey. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I also have a newsletter for change makers and nonprofit leaders where I share tips, resources, and sometimes funding opportunities. Be sure to check that out in the link below this video and subscribe to that too. And check out my website, foundertofulltime.com for online trainings on how to start a nonprofit and develop a fundraising plan. All right, donations, fundraising events, grants, all of these are commonly known ways to raise money for a nonprofit organization. It's a common misconception that nonprofits cannot charge a fee for their services, but in actuality, they can charge a fee for their programs and services, and this is called earned income. Earned income is defined as generating revenue through business activities such as the sale of goods or services that are aligned with the organization's mission and expertise. I've talked about this idea of earned income in a couple of other videos, especially how to determine if an earned income strategy is the right fit for your nonprofit, and if so, how do you do it? So be sure to check out some of those other videos as well. So in this video, I'm gonna focus on nine ways that nonprofits can generate sustainable revenue through earned income. Um, and these methods to combat that misconception are not just perfectly legal, they're also very commonplace in well-established nonprofit organizations. But before I get into those nine ways you can generate revenue through earned income strategies, I just wanna cover a couple of considerations that you need to think through when considering if an earned income strategy is right for your organization. Okay, so consideration number one is that you can't generate substantial revenue through your nonprofit through the sale of just any goods or services. You have to sell goods or services that specifically align with and further your nonprofit organization's public serving mission. If you don't, if you're generating revenue in a way that doesn't further your mission as a nonprofit, the IRS might call this what's known as unrelated business income, and the name of it kind of suggests what it is, right? It's your nonprofit's doing business that is unrelated to its mission. If you're generating too much unrelated business income, the IRS can decide to penalize you, make you pay taxes or fees on the income that you generated through those means. So you really wanna avoid that. And if you do it too much, you might even put your tax exempt status at risk. So just something to keep an eye on. This idea of unrelated business income seems to be a little confusing to several folks. So I'm just gonna give an example to help you paint a picture of how this works. Let's say you're an animal rescue nonprofit organization and you have an online shop and you're selling t-shirts. That revenue would not be furthering your organization's mission. That would be considered unrelated business income because the actual act of selling t-shirts does nothing to further animal rescues. Um, in comparison, let's say an animal rescue nonprofit has a shop where you can buy pet supplies. Well, in that case, people having pet supplies and having access to pet supplies does further the animal rescue mission. So that would be considered related business. I hope that that sort of helps clarify how that works. Consideration two is public perception and how you'll communicate your earned income strategy. And the reason for this is it's really important to be transparent and compelling with your messaging around your earned income strategy so that the public understands how paying for the service or good 
furthers your charitable mission. Not everyone understands how earned income works or how it's a common strategy for nonprofits. So having a clear and compelling message ready to go if you launch an earned income strategy can really help avoid public confusion. Okay, those considerations all out of the way, let's get into these nine ways that nonprofits can charge for their services or goods. Number one is the straightforward fee for service model. This is where you charge a fee for the service you provide. Think of, for example, a nonprofit health clinic charging a reasonable fee for a medical consultation to its patients. Um, it's important to make sure that the fees are reasonable, that they're not excessive, and that they are directly connected to your mission, as I said. So paying for a medical consultation to support a health clinic makes total sense here. Another real life example that you might be familiar with is the YMCA. One of the YMCA's tenets, parts of their mission include promoting healthy living. So think of a YMCA gym. Charging for the gym memberships is promoting healthy living. Thus, it is a fee for service that works within the related business strategy. The second way you can charge for services is membership fees. So this doesn't necessarily mean that your audience is literal voting members of your nonprofit. It could just mean members of a group. So membership fee in this case would be um, when you are offering certain benefits or access to special things to people dubbed members who are paying for this fee. One real life example of this is actually the Smithsonian Institute. They charge for a program called Smithsonian Associates where the people who are paying that membership donation are getting access to special lectures, events, etc. The third method is tuition or training fees. So just like how it sounds, this is where you would charge a fee to go through some kind of course or education or workshop or training. Maybe you get a certification at the end, etc. One of the most well-known examples of this is the Red Cross. The Red Cross charges a reasonable fee to complete its CPR certification, among other certifications and trainings. So that is one of the ways that you could consider, if, especially if you're an organization whose mission is to uh, further education on a particular topic. Method number four is consulting and professional services. This could be a really good method for you if your organization has a very specific and uh, advanced level of expertise on a particular topic. One real life example of this is the Bridgespan Group. They uh, are a nonprofit that consults other nonprofits to help them understand and expand their impact and to sustain their model, they charge for those consulting services. Number five is product sales. This is a commonly thought of example here, but in this case, because we're talking about earned income, we're talking about product sales that align with and further the mission of the organization. So maybe you're an organization that promotes environmental stewardship and you sell eco-friendly products. That aligns. You are furthering the mission of being eco-friendly, environmentally friendly through the sale of those products. Another example you might have heard of is an organization called 10,000 Villages. They are a nonprofit organization that promotes uh, fair trade and they sell the crafted goods of artisans from around the world and the money supports those artisans. Um, so again you're selling a product that directly furthers your mission method number six is licensing and royalties and i think this is a really interesting one because you wouldn't necessarily associate this with nonprofit revenue generation but it totally is uh, you would be licensing things like your intellectual property maybe research findings software that you develop um, educational materials etc again furthering and, and amplifying your specific mission a super super famous example of this is actually uh, the sesame workshop which you might be able to guess is the nonprofit behind sesame street I did not know there was a nonprofit behind Sesame Street until I got into researching all this stuff and learning more about the nonprofit world years ago. So I think this is super interesting, but they're the nonprofit who licenses the characters, the stories, the you know education, et cetera, um, of, the, of Sesame Street to various platforms to sustain its mission of making education accessible to all. 
Another one is event ticket sales. Um, so you can do fundraising events, galas, etc. Those are the common types of fundraising events that you might encounter. But in this particular case, when we're talking about earned income, you might be talking about selling tickets to events through which you are fulfilling your mission. And probably the most famous example that I can think of to share with you is TED Talks. TED is a nonprofit and they administer their mission of you know inspiring innovation and, and ideas all over the world through TED Talks. So when you attend a TED event, you are furthering the TED mission and the events are the vehicle through which they are delivering their mission. Number eight is rental and facility fees. And obviously this is very specific to nonprofits who have a facility that they're able to rent out, but uh, you can rent out your facility for other organizations, meetings, events, etc. One common example here would be museums or botanical gardens. They often rent out their facilities to people um, maybe having weddings or um, hosting a corporate party or something like that, and that generates revenue for them. And since their mission includes making sure the public can access the beautiful amenities of a botanical garden or a museum, um, then they're furthering their mission by allowing people to host their special events in those spaces. Number nine is publication sales. Maybe your nonprofit does or aspires to develop and sell books or audiobooks or materials. Um, you can sell those and the public pub, bleh, the publication fees can support the rest of your mission. One example of this is the Audubon Society. Um, they are of course dedicated to the conservation and protection of birds and so they might sell a bird guide uh, as one mechanism to generate revenue for their cause. Okay, I'd love to hear from you now. What do you think of these ideas? Are you hearing any that might be a good fit for your nonprofit or social enterprise model? Um, are you already doing any of these? How is it going? Share in the comments below. As I mentioned before, if you are in the process of starting a nonprofit or developing a sustainable fundraising model to include possibly earned income or other strategies, check out my website, foundertofulltime.com, where I have some online trainings that will guide you through the process to do those things. If you're looking for ongoing resources for change makers and nonprofit leaders, check out my newsletter that I have linked below. I share tips, resources, funding opportunities, all of the above, and I hope that it will help you out. Also, I have a group on Facebook called Change the World or Bust. We have almost 5,000 people in there. Maybe even by the time of posting this video, we'll have more than 5,000. That'd be super cool. Come on by, join us. We are in there talking about all the different ways we're trying to make an impact in the world and helping each other out at the same time. That's all I have for you today. I hope that this was helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye.